church, everybody. Welcome. We're here in uh, the foyer welcoming people. We it's are. great to be in church today. Yeah. My name's Terry. This is my good friend Maddie. She's joining us today to be at church. And no doubt we have people walking past, as yeah. you can see. And <laughs> just before we came online, we had them coming up and saying and hi. Yeah, hi. we were about to have a full conversation go live. So. Yeah, it's great. Um, but great to have you join with us. We've got a few people on the chat already. Good morning, Betty from Gympie. Great to have you with us. Cedric as well, Chris as well. So yeah, Terry. Wow, I, and you mentioned that word to be live. Yes. And we were talking about that just before we came on with church vision, where church is going this year. What yeah. does it mean to be alive? Yeah, I am so stoked for this new vision and what this means for our church. But Terry, I got to ask, what does it mean to you to be fully alive? Well, I, I got this, um, I was reading this quote by Leslie Newbigin, who is from the UK. He, and he said, the quote was, the explosion of joy over the birth, over the death, resurrection, and birth of Jesus Christ. Yep. Oh, or maybe I've that. got that round the wrong way. The birth, <laughs> the birth, and the then the death, death then the resurrection. Then the, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but the explosion of joy. Yeah. What an awesome phrase, the explosion of joy. Yeah. And I really think that, like, just sums up what it means to be fully alive, to be in that joy in every stage of our lives, and take that along with us in the yes. journey of, of Christ as yes. well. So. And for us to be excited that we've got Christ within yep. us. And I love it in 1 Corinthians where it reads, where God, as soon as we receive Christ, God has deposited that Holy Spirit within us. Yeah, oh, amazing. And we've got that, all of us. Yeah. If you're born again, believe in Jesus Christ, you've received them as your Lord and Savior, you've got the deposit yeah. of Holy and Spirit. And we've got, we've got the immediate access to that as well. That's right. Yeah. And, and I oh, think that's part of being alive. Yeah. And you know what? Like along with this vision, we've got some amazing things happening this month. We've got our 21 days of prayer and fasting kicking off. And like, Terry, do you know what you're going to give up? Is it going to be, you know, anything special for me? I'm thinking of giving up sugar because I, I can't really go a day without it. But that's sort of a one for me. But what about you, Terry? Uh, uh, one year I gave up drinking coffee for the whole 21 days. Oh, that's a real fast. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, probably try and do a meal. A meal, yeah. A meal. Cool. Try and fit in a meal somewhere, probably a breakfast or maybe a lunch. Yeah. Because you can still snack. But I think also trying to bring in um, that prayer time. Yeah. To pray regularly over that 21 days, try and lock in that time because we know that life can get really busy. Oh, for sure. But to bring in that time where we can, hey, this is where maybe I miss out on the lunch, but I can pray. You can pray. And, yeah. you know, where you're thinking about having, for me, if it's, I'm thinking about having a piece of cake, to pray into that in that moment and be well, like, into the cake or. <laughs> <laughs> To pray and be like, God, give me the strength to get through this. So, yeah, you know what? It's so awesome. We've got our encounter night happening on March the 3rd as well. Um, so we're going to just have a really great spirit-filled yes. month. We um, are. And it's going to be absolutely phenomenal. So. so what are you doing online? What are you looking at yeah. as far as next month and to be able to pray or for the 21 days of fasting? Or what does it mean for you to be full of joy, yep. the explosion the of explosion. joy? Yes. Because quite often we can go up and down and I think in our Christian journey yeah. where we're trying to navigate through life. But what does that mean for you? Yeah, and you know what, as we're going through like worship this week and, and you know, we've got the midweek happening as well, which we'll touch on a bit later. Have a think about how you can practically do that in your life. You know, is it throughout the week? Can you maybe just block out, um, take a morning walk and spend that that with nature, with God, um, when you're thinking about your fast, really ask yep. the Lord and say, God, what do you want me to give up? Not just what I feel like I should give up, but Lord, what do you want me to give up? And maybe that's different to what you want to give up. Maybe He wants you to take on a new challenge or a new thing. So yeah, I reckon it's going to be a, a really awesome, powerful month this yeah. week. The first week's always easy because you're keen, <laughs> you're ready to be in there. Yeah. And you're ready to make that connection, but it's that maybe that third, fourth yeah. week 
Where you, oh, the no. shininess has sort of worn off yeah. a little bit. Yeah. And that's when that's when it really kicks in. And yep. Also, take a notebook and a yeah. pen. You know, if you're out walking and you write down those things that you believe God is sharing with you, and they're really, really good because yep. over the last probably eight months, I've learned reflection yeah. to reflect back yep. and to see where God has spoken, where He's moved. Because sometimes we're looking for what we're looking for, where we want God to move, but yeah. God actually moves in other areas Different of our lives. Different ways as well. Yeah. And I can see you've brought your physical Bible with you as well. I reckon that's an awesome way to just engage as well. Bring your physical yes. Bible. Ask the Lord to literally, as you're turning those pages, to to let something pop out at you and to give you that fresh yep. new word so that you do feel fully alive for the day and do feel fully alive um, as we go through the week. So yeah, like just a small encouragement for you guys, but I am so pumped for what this today has to, um, what we're going through today and what we're going through the rest of the month as well. Well, we're about to kick into our time of worship. Yep. Um, and we are so looking forward and we're so grateful that you're able to join us, that mm. you're allowed us to enter into your living room space. It is, we're looking forward to another great service here at City Life Church. And we would love to be with you through yeah. the whole morning. Yeah. We're still counting down. This is the great <laughs> thing about technology. <laughs> so let's just enjoy Spend some time in worship and we'll see we'll you see soon. We'll see you soon. Welcome church. Isn't it so great to be here? And even online, why don't we sing with joy in our hearts? Because where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Amen? Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And why don't we sing with joy and freedom this morning?
There is power in the mighty name of Jesus. Sing, I just want. I just want to speak the name of Jesus. Over every heart and every mind. Yes, I know there is peace within your presence. Holy speak, Jesus. I just want, I just want to speak the name of Jesus. If you believe it, every dark addiction starts to break. Oh, there is freedom. There is hope and there is freedom. I speak Jesus. I see your name. Your name is
Thank you, God. Yes, God. Sing your promise. Your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness. Faithfulness. I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence. You never failed me. Your promise. Your promise still stands. Great is your faith. Yes, he is faithful. Oh, we're still in your hands. Still in your hands. This is my confidence. You never fail me yet. See, I know the night.
38, Jesus promised his followers that rivers, streams of life would flow, spirit-filled life would flow from their inmost being. For it is as Paul wrote, in him we live and move and have our being. We are exhorted at this time of the new four-year vision to live fully alive. This is only possible when we remain and live and walk in His Holy Spirit presence. Jesus came to give us abundant life, full life in Him. 
And that life only occurs when we allow His Spirit to teach us, lead us, and overflow from us with His fruit of love, joy, and other fruit of God's Holy Spirit. In Matthew 7, 16, Jesus said, it is by their fruit you will know them. Let's allow Jesus' Spirit to refire, refresh, and remain in us today as our source of life. It was for Isaac who flourished, who flourished when he settled at the well near Be Lahai Roy because the life-giving water of the Spirit of God was his life source. Let's be desperate for the fullness of the Spirit of God, the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus, abundant life today and every day. Praise Jesus. Let's lean in, guys. We are singing about revival. We are singing about the inbreaking of the kingdom of God. So I'm going to ask Chloe for us to lead us. Just sing that again and really open your hearts to Him. we just acknowledge that you are here. Holy Spirit, we thank you for your presence here in this room, here in this place, wherever we might be worshiping from. Lord, we thank you that your Holy Spirit is with every single person who acknowledges Christ, who follows Jesus, who loves you, Lord, that your spirit and your presence is always with us. God, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your prophetic word. We thank you that your word is alive and it brings and speaks life into every single one of us. And so God, we open ourselves to you. We honor you. We give you room and space in this place, God, to do whatever you will in our hearts, in our lives, in our families, in our church, in our communities, in our city. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen. Let's give the Lord a clap. Amen. Thank you, Father, for praise and worship. Thank you, Lord, that we can come to you any part of the day. Father, that we can exalt your name. We can lift you up on high. That, Father, that you are worthy. You are worthy of praise and worship. Lord, you are worthy to be lifted up. Father, I love that where we can cast all of our cares onto you because you care for us. Lord, that worship is showing our heart reflection of you within our lives. Lord, that you really do soak us in to your love, your grace, and your mercy. And Lord, that we can exercise that through our words to you. And this morning, we just thank you, Father. We thank you for who you are, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. What Amen. a powerful time of worship. It was. Incredible. Well, was. hello to everyone joining us today online. We love being with you in your living room, yes. your kitchens, whatever you're doing. A um, couple people to say hi to Adele, uh, Brissa, Linda, Eric. Great to have you guys with us. Yeah, we love being with you. Yes. 
And if you're joining us for the first time, we really do appreciate everything that that you've, you know, inviting us into your lounge yeah. or into that space. And uh, if you'd like to text the word new, that's N-E-W. Yes. New to O for triple eight four triple seven three. Three. Yes. I can remember. Do last it again. <laughs> oh, for triple eight four triple seven three. Yeah. Maddie, last time when I did this last year when I was learning, I started to say my own oh. mobile <laughs> number. <laughs> Well, at least it's a number. It's going somewhere, right? That's so. right. <laughs> so drop us a line. Give us one of those thumbs up. Yep. Emojis, or a wave I think they emoji. call it. And uh, <laughs> one of, somebody will be in touch with you yep. in that. Awesome. And if you've got kids, we have got a combined primary prep to grade, sorry, combined <laughs> primary service for prep to grade six online. Um, you can So you can attend Kids Church in person. You would have seen some kids walking through, checking in. Um, but also you can access our kids' content um, at the link coming up below, also known as Kids, Con kids Connect. Yes. Um, so please join our Kids Zoom also Sundays at 10 a.m. So, yep, I know that the online kids team have just done an amazing job in facilitating and going through the last couple of years. So... Get your kids on it. It's great fun. So They do a lot of planning behind the scenes yes, absolutely. to get everybody incorporated, but it just gives our children a space to be able to hear yeah. the, hear about the gospel stories or yep. the old stories. You know, this morning when I came in this morning to church, there was a couple who were going to share about Adam and Eve and they'd cut this wooden tree out oh, to show that. the kids and just to do that story. The little story. apple. Yeah. And yes. Oh, that's awesome. And they had this long sock that looked like a snake you know <laughs> <laughs> so they're really getting into it and that's what they do here at city life yeah, church that's awesome and then they put a lot of great effort into it um and as i mentioned before we also have the 21 days of prayer and fasting and you know as a church we're going into this season of the new mm. vision and being fully alive in christ so yep. if you want to get the daily um, reminders and the updates uh text 21 so 21 days the number 21 um, to 04 888 4 and you'll get the <laughs> you'll get the different daily reminders. I, I, a tongue tire that one. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Um, but along with that, we also have our encounter night. So we actually have different encounter nights at our different sites, but we do have a special online encounter coming up on the 3rd of March at 7:15 p.m. So that will be. They'll be really excited yeah. as well. And that's some space for us to jump in and to learn a wee bit more about the gospel, about what's been shared and talked about. And sometimes it's just expanding our understanding. Absolutely. That we don't get just get fixed in one way of this is what I think it, but really grabbing pieces of word, theolo 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 Still. Theological We're a words <laughs> and all of that that actually broaden our mind. Yeah. And that we just, you know, and this is the thing, not to get fixed, but we can be flexible yeah. in what how we understand the gospels in that as well. Yeah. And like you mentioned, learning and taking on new things and understanding more. And as we go into this season, we've actually got a midweek service that yeah. happens every Thursday at 7.15. And I know I've been tuning in and it's a really great way and a place to unpack some of those things that we learn um, in our Sunday services and just go that next step and deeper, just delve deeper into these things. So please join us. I know you and the team yeah. have done an amazing job in just being an open, chill space to, to really just learn more yes. during the week. Yeah. I have it on whilst I'm eating dinner and yep. it's just a great, a cool place to hang out. So Love it is, it. which actually brings us now to a video that we'd like to share with you all. Uh, and we're just going to go back and in, into this video clip about live tracks. Yeah. So sit back, watch this, and we'll be back with you shortly. Who the Holy Spirit is, is... The Holy Spirit is a creator. We see him at work during creation. Yeah, just like a, a fun best friend. I think growing up, I often thought of the Holy Spirit very much as a as an it. It's part of the Godhead, uh, the Trinity. And as Christians, we believe that God is is one in essence, but three in persons. Um, the Holy Spirit, we would also say, is a person. And the Holy Spirit is one of those 
persons. We see the Spirit of God be portrayed as having emotions. He can be angry, he can be sad, he can be grieved as well. He's also a comforter. Somebody who like empowers you, encourages you, champions you on. In John 14 verse 16, where Jesus was saying, um, I will pray to the Father um, so he can send you another helper or comforter. One of the churches that I went to growing up, like they put an emphasis on hearing the voice of God and prophesying and doing all those types of things. So I was able to like see a lot of that come into play in my life. For me, the aspect where I believe the Holy Spirit operates so much is in the Word of God. Whether it's prophecy, whether it's healing, whether it's um, word of knowledge, all of them boils down to the Word of God. The Bible says that everything will pass away, but the Word of God will not pass away. He's the spirit of truth. So there's absolutely no lie in him. So this is the Holy Spirit that I, I, I believe in. He's also my, our teacher. We hear about all these stories and different people's testimonies and it's like, yeah, like we want to see that. But there's also like, I don't know, like the daily grind of the Holy Spirit. Myself, I'm an accountant. Sometimes you build a spreadsheet and it feels like, how is this making any impact? Um, but it really can. It can make a difference, um, even the way that you you work with excellence. Like in, in the in the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit fell on those that were, I think they were craft makers. And so we see the Holy Spirit working through, through creativity and excellence as much as we do through uh, miracles. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 12, it says that there are different kind of gifts, but the same Spirit distributes them. Um, and if it's the same, if God gives, gives something to me, who is any other person to tell me that uh, mine is lesser or let's say yours is inferior? And I think what's important for us is to, to recognize and be thankful for every one of those moments. If we get an opportunity to serve someone and it, it brings a smile to their face or they feel really loved, and we, we are thankful to God and recognize that the Holy Spirit is working in there, I think we have a very different perspective of everything we do. It doesn't even matter whether or not you're an extrovert or an introvert. I believe God has not created a useless person. Everybody has some form of gifting. You know, it may be different from person to person, but everybody has something. So we need to pray and we will be able to figure out what it is. Each person, every city. One of the ways we can partner together to see the vision come to life is to help someone else take a next step towards encountering Jesus. A great way to be equipped to do this is to attend our online course, On Mission with God at Home. Facilitated by the amazing Tina Waldron, you will learn simple and practical tools on how to reach others for Christ, starting on the 1st of March. The back foot principle is amazing. I've never even thought of it before. The course changes your, your thinking. Often some of the spiritual conversations come up when you're absolutely not expecting them. And doing a course like this in particular helps you be <laughs> on the front foot. As a life group, we just finished the Alpha course. When your course came up, I thought it was a natural progression from the Alpha to this. We also encourage you to take your own next steps in encountering full life in Christ by attending one of our other Life Track courses. Here's what's on offer. Don't hesitate. Check out the details online at citylife.church forward slash life tracks. Awesome. How good is that? Like there's so much happening in the yeah. life track space. Um, I, I'm doing one, which is a mission mission at home. Um, lots of tongue, tongue twisters. <laughs> yes. So Very good course run by Tina Waldron. Yeah. Just, but I think right across the board, there's some excellent material that yep. everybody can grab. Yeah. And with this new vision, I really encourage you guys, go on the website and see what mm. there is. There is so much when you just log in and you can try to just have a play around the website. I'm sure you'll yep. find stuff. But 
Yeah, with this new vision, you know, I've been really thinking about what does it mean to be fully alive? And I've, as I've been reading in the Gospels, I've been really struck by the generosity of the early church. And um, we, like on Friday, we actually kicked off our epic youth life group. So first one, there were fresh faces, a lot of really small year seven kids, but you know, when we had got them into the room, we had actually got all these bags of like chips and lollies and stuff. And to me, it was just chips and lollies, you know, run in the mill, I see it every day. Um, doesn't really appeal to me. But with the kids, when we gave it to them, it was like chips and seagulls. Like they flocked to it. They were fighting over who gets yeah. Doritos and who Is gets right? like the Smith's <laughs> chips. They were literally arguing about who gets more Frodo frogs. And I was just like, oh my goodness, I forgot what it's like to be in grade seven and fight over chips and lollies and stuff like that. But then as I was sort of... I know it's a bit of a weird story, but as I was thinking about it, I was reminded of a verse in 2 Corinthians and it says, whatever you give is acceptable if you give it eagerly and give according to what you have, not what you don't have. Um, And like, as we, you know, as I was thinking about that story, I was reminded about how, to me, those chips and lollies didn't really mean that much. You know, I can just go to Woolies and get them. But to those kids, it meant they had a great night on Friday. They yeah. were able to engage with their friends, make friends, get some snacks, have a great time. And I was almost like, oh, I really shouldn't have just been like, oh, who cares about the chips and lollies? Yeah. Not a big deal. But I think the same is with our giving as well. When we give, we give because not out of what we don't have, but what we do have. And that small thing that we might think, oh, it's just meaning is meaningless, really can have a great impact in the hands of God when we give it to the Lord and He can just multiply it and do amazing yep. things with it. So um, I really encourage you guys when you, you know, give your offering and you think, oh, you know, what? it's not even that much. What's it really going to do? God can take that and multiply it and use mm. it to really expand His kingdom and to bring about um, some awesome change that we mm. will never even, might not even see this side of eternity. So, yep. yeah, that's awesome. And, you know, I'm, I'm really excited about this vision and what that means. So, Terry, prayer and fasting, fully alive. What are we going to, what's something that you want to implement in your life to 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 do over this 21 days? Well, as I said right at the start, I think just by missing a meal and spending that time in prayer, but you actually remind me through the scripture is to spend some, probably one of the biggest things, and let me be real here, is reading. Yeah. You know, I, I struggle with reading. I struggle with, I'm going to read a passage a day or a scripture of a day. Yeah. And like I've even set up my Bible on the on my phone, you know, U, U Bible or whatever yep, it is. the U Vision. The app. And to get me things and I'll look at it, but then I'm on to the next thing. And for me, I think over the 21 days, is I'm going to try and make that effort, that conscious yeah. effort of reading my Bible. That's awesome. And that. I'm, I'm with you. I really struggle to read the Bible as well. And I found a daily audio Bible app um, that actually just talks it out to me. So I'll take it with the with my walks, but I will be completely transparent. I am about three weeks behind on this and we're not even two months into the year. So I think I really, over these um, this vision month, just yeah. want to really knuckle down and, and make sure that I'm feeding on his word because we can't we can't do anything well, without well maybe we should do and try this at home too you know maybe we should make hey look let's keep each other accountable yeah and yep. just text and say hey where are you going Maddie how's it going Have so you we done create it? that because I think as you get older as a Christian you think we've got it all yeah. But then to bring it together where we hold each other accountable for these 21 days yeah. and let's nail this. Yeah, absolutely. And it, do it in your life groups. Do it with your families. Yep. Do it with your kids. I remember growing up as my parents would say, you know what, we're going to we're gonna do a month of just, uh, you know, fasting and all of us are going to read this Bible passage. Um, and when I was a kid, I was like, oh, that's so boring. But now... I think about it, I'm like, that's awesome. My parents, 
they never held me, you know, fully accountable and never yep. sort of punished me when I didn't do it. But they gave me the space to be able to do that. Yes. And um, I think that accountability is just so important because yep. it, it keeps you going, gives you that energy yep. that you and need. And encouragement to. as well. Absolutely. We can encourage each other in this journey. Yeah, for sure. That's awesome. So I think we're going to come up to some other encouragements as well. We've got, as we've said, there's been so much going on here yes. at City Life Church. Oh, you know, it's been a it's been a busy month. For it sure. has been. February is when things take Just ramp off. Up. They yep. do. Yep. And we want you to be part of that. But we also this morning come up with a great guy who's going to share a wonderful message yes. that it will be able to encourage us, help us grow. And, uh, you know, we, his name is Paul. Some of you may know him as Pope John Paul. That is not the guy. <laughs> it, Paul out of the Bible, the tent maker. That is not definitely not No, he's not, not going to be here today, unfortunately. No, and it's definitely not my neighbour across the road, Paul. <laughs> so this is Paul Molyneux, our lead pastor here at City Life Church, Knox Campus. Yeah. That he is going to share a wonderful message that we've got for all of us today and uh, we just want you to buckle in because yeah. it's just another part of the uh, of what City Life is doing here for us today. Yeah. Kind of thought of that wedge, you know, it's another wee part. You know, as kids you used to get those little wedges of cheese. Oh, like the, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. and in the circle. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, So yeah. kind of one wedge, but it doesn't, you're going to make up the whole, the whole, whole piece. piece. Yeah. So there's plenty of pieces to the puzzle this morning that we've talked about, that we've shared about, but we want you to do that. Yeah. So let's get into this. Let's also pray for our offering. Father, we thank you for your generosity. Lord, we thank you for scripture that is, Lord, that speaks to us. Mm not just in a general way, but in a personal way as well. Lord, that we're able to take that, just digest it, but Lord, help us in our journey. Lord, we put up our hand and we say, Father, here we are. Lord, hold our hand as we navigate through life. Hold our hand as we just take these steps forward into the fastening, into the things that you've got for us in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. We'll see you soon, guys. To everybody, particularly those if it's the first time you've been with us this year. I know lots of people coming back for the first time this year to be with us. Really welcome you. Everybody in the balcony, welcome you as well. You'll notice that we've got all of the seats out so that we can give you enough space to uh, not get too tight in, although it's great to have so many with us. And online, welcome this morning. Really believe that God wants to speak to us and challenge us today. Just before I start, I wonder if you'd indulge me. Let me welcome some of my friends uh, that have joined us this morning. Uh, uh, Jeff and Sally Kwan are right here in the middle section. Uh, Jeff and I were youth pastors together and uh, such a great uh, relationship, working together, and great to have them with us this morning. And also, Dave Ridden's here with us. Uh, Dave is a long-term friend from Perth, and uh, we work together at Youth Alive. And so why don't we give them a welcome this morning. Great to have you with us, and many other friends too. I really believe that God's going to speak to us today, and thanks, Margaret, for sharing that word today for us. Um, through the week when I saw Margaret let us know about this word, she felt God was uh, sharing with us as a church community. If you know what happened for me last weekend, I was supposed to be speaking last weekend. Uh, I had my message finished and then on Tuesday when I saw Margaret's word, it was the sermon outline of today. So uh, we know that God is speaking to us as a church community about the Holy Spirit coming and being at work within us. And so I pray today you'd have an open heart, an open heart to hear the things that not just you've come to receive today, but the word that God wants to speak to you today. Do you believe that? Because when we come together, uh, God speaks to us and we need to have open ears, ears and open mind and also an open heart to uh, receive the things that he wants to speak to us about. I believe that today. A few weekends ago, uh, our senior minister, Andrew, shared with us the fully alive vision for our church. Uh, do you remember what we spoke about? You saw it earlier on the news. Each person fully alive, 
every city overflowing with life. That's right. Each person fully alive in Christ, every city overflowing with kingdom life. We're believing for an outpouring of God's spirit. And that's why this first year is all about opening ourselves, opening our life, surrendering to the work of God's spirit. And last week, Shelley led us into this, speaking about the power of the spirit. And today, I really want to speak about and focus on the work of the spirit in our lives, particularly, as Margaret said a little earlier, the fruit of the spirit. Before we go there, a bit of an introduction for me as we move into the fully alive vision. I want to know where I fit into this vision. I want to allow God to speak to me about that. We want the corporate vision, but also we want to find our place in the vision, don't we? As as individuals, as families and the things that God would speak to us about. And as I've been reading, you know the seasons of our church that Andrew spoke about. Um, the early seasons of Jerusalem, Antioch, Ephesus, and now this journey that Paul had towards Rome. We believe that there's things that God is speaking to us as a church community about. And so I've been reading through uh, the book of Acts, the book of Romans, and really challenged by that message that uh, uh, Andrew gave us a few weeks ago around Acts 28, the last um, chapter in the book of Acts around Paul's journey, Uh, gets a shipwreck, remember the story, Uh, goes onto the island of Malta, was never really expecting to to get to Malta. That wasn't the destination, but certainly part of the journey. Uh, Paul tries to help build a fire. What happens? Snake comes out, latches onto his arm, and uh, all of a sudden the people think it's the judgment of God on him. Obviously, he's an evil man. Uh, He's not affected by the snake, uh, and he's... Uh, not impacted at all. So a few minutes later, they think that he's a God and God's set him apart. It's interesting how people's opinion of you can change so quickly, isn't it? But that's another message for another day. And Paul makes it to Rome. And the last verse of the book of Acts really spoke to me. The last verse, Acts chapter 28 and verse 31. And it says that, Paul, after all of these trials, all of these tribulations, was preaching and proclaiming the kingdom of God and teaching about the Lord Jesus Christ with all openness and boldness. Say that last three words with me. Unhindered and unrestrained. The gospel proceeded through lots of trial, through lots of tribulation, and it was unhindered and unrestrained. And if you read the church email right to the end on Wednesday, you would have seen that that's what I shared a little bit about. I'm taking that as a word for me this year. You know that we've all faced challenges, haven't we? We've faced challenges over the last 18 months. It's almost felt like maybe the church itself is being a little oppressed and facing some some challenges and we're in a rebuilding phase. But I believe God's promised to us as a church community that the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ through His Spirit at work in us, is going to continue to move forward unhindered and unrestrained. Amen? If you're watching at home today, I believe that for us, a word for us, unhindered and unrestrained. This morning, if you've got your Bible, why don't you join with me, uh, turn, type it in however you find it. It's okay, I don't mind. John chapter 14. We're going to go there as we prepare ourselves for spirit life. Uh, You'll be hearing more about, more messages around spirit life throughout this year. Inviting God to come and work in us and through us. And there's lots of focus that we could have at different messages. And today my uh, challenge for us is around allowing Holy Spirit to come and be at work in us and to allow the fruit of the Spirit to work through us as a sign to everybody that we encounter. John chapter 14, verse 15, the Bible says, If you love me, keep my commands, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever, the Spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him. For he lives with you and he will be with you. 
The word here that Jesus talks to us about the Holy Spirit coming to you uh, is the helper, the a paraclete. You may have heard that language, that word, if you've been around church for a while. One who walks alongside, one who guides and comforts or advocates for us and helps us in our journey as we walk, uh, walk with him and allow the Spirit to be at work within us. And I think what we have to be careful of is if you've been walking with Jesus for a while, that we get used to some of these things. We get used to the Holy Spirit being at work within us. Or there were things that we saw in the past and we believe for, and God has done many good things. He's done many good things in our church and through our church. But you know, I believe their best days for our church are ahead of us. More and more people are going to encounter Him through our church, through our lives. And we're believing for the Holy Spirit to be at work in us and through our church community. And for us to do that, we simply need to open our heart to him. That's each of us. That's not a couple of people just opening themselves to the work of the Spirit. In fact, it's an invitation for all of us to open our hearts to him, to surrender uh, our lives to him. In knowing the Holy Spirit is walking with me to fill me, equip me, empower me for the fruit of the Spirit, and the power of the Spirit to help me point people to Him. That's what the work of the Spirit is about for us. So a few foundational thoughts, and then we'll move into the message. Uh, Again, if you've been around church life for a while, some of these are going to be a reminder of things you already know, and I really sense God wanting us to to live out. Uh, Jesus told us, John 14, introduction of the Holy Spirit, although we know that right through the Old Testament, as you heard last week, the Spirit was at work. Spirit hovered over the waters in creation. Spirit of the Lord came upon people in the Old Testament for different works that God had called them to. In the New Testament, Jesus tells us when you come to faith, when you surrender your life to Him, uh, when you uh, come to encounter God as Father, Holy Spirit comes and dwells within you. Move into Acts chapter 2. The Bible says that suddenly a sound like a blowing of a violent wind came from heaven heaven and filled the whole house where the disciples were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire. Now, I don't always see the wind. Uh, My wife and I go and walk up at the thousand steps. Any of the people, all the healthy people go up to the thousand steps? (laughs) Actually, I don't want to overstate it. Occasionally, I go with my wife to the thousand steps. And we have a walk up through the hills. It's really nice. And I can see the effect of the wind. In fact, recently, all of the big storms, there's lots of trees uh, that have fallen down. I'm just letting the people know uh, that are going up there regularly that I've been there. I know I've seen the trees that have fallen over, just affirming the healthy lifestyle that I have. (laughs) But I've seen the effect of the wind. I see the, the wind blow through the trees. I feel the wind. I can see the impact and the power of the wind. There are some things I don't understand. And it's a similar uh, thing to the Holy Spirit. There are some things I don't understand, but I know the effect of the Holy Spirit. I sense the Holy Spirit. I've seen the power of the Holy Spirit. And that's the journey that we are being invited along uh, with that each of us would step into this and sense that breath of God, that work of the Spirit in us and amongst us each day. So if you believe in Jesus, Holy Spirit lives in you. Ephesians 1, Paul tells us, is that if you're included in Christ, if you've heard the message of truth, the gospel of salvation, then the Holy Spirit is within you, that marked presence and seal of the Spirit. In fact, we believe that before you encounter Jesus, the Holy Spirit is leading you, challenging you, guiding you, convicting you, pointing you towards Jesus pointing you towards salvation and encountering God and encountering the things of His Spirit. I say that because some people feel like that 
There's an event of the Holy Spirit in the baptism. We believe in the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Shelley spoke about that last weekend. And there were people that were baptized in the Holy Spirit last weekend in our services. Uh, But there is an indwelling that comes at salvation. Nobody has missed out. Uh, There's nothing that you need to strive for. In fact, Holy Spirit is with you. And today, that's the focus of our message that the Holy Spirit lives within us. And Paul invites us in Galatians chapter 5 to walk in the Spirit. To walk in the Spirit throughout this year as we experience spirit life, being fully alive, that we would walk in the Spirit. And in Galatians chapter 5 verse 16, Paul reminds us to walk in the Spirit and to not gratify the desires of the flesh. A commentator on this passage of scripture reminds us that it is an imperative that this this engagement with the Holy Spirit is a relational activity there is a companionship with the Spirit Holy Spirit is not a force not shouldn't be left out somewhere as a power or as a presence that you sense when you come to church no Holy Spirit is with us. In your living room right now, Holy Spirit is with you. If you're driving along in your car listening uh, to this message, even in traffic, Holy Spirit is with you. Just take a deep breath. Allow the presence of God to come and be with you as you sit in peak hour traffic. There is a commitment that we have to walking. Some theologians call this the dance. The dance where we allow Holy Spirit to lead us And we willingly follow and submit and surrender our lives to his work throughout each day. Inviting the Holy Spirit to to engage with us. And I've sensed it myself, you know, when you get some of those complex issues. Anybody feel those complex issues in life? You know, I've had to train myself rather than react rather than to respond in a way that I don't need to, actually to stop and allow that breath of God, that wind of the Spirit, to come and be at work within me. In fact, in my previous role, I used to travel pretty regularly and there were lots of meetings uh, that I would go to Sydney for, board meetings, executive meetings, and there'd be some complex issues that we'd speak about. And in fact, I'd be honest enough to say, these issues were beyond even some of my comprehension Uh, And so I'd find myself as I was driving to the airport, uh, literally start to be praying about those things. It would be a natural response and find myself moving into just speaking in the heavenly language and asking God for wisdom, asking for the spirit to come and help and lead and guide. In fact, towards the end, it was quite funny of my time as you know, I made a transition recently back into being here at City Life, um, I had an Uber driver was driving me to the airport and uh, thankfully I'd put my mask on and as I'd start to pray, uh, either, all of a sudden the Uber driver turning around, you know, wanting to know whether I was talking to him and I tried to, you know, thankfully I had my mask on and just told him I'm fine and uh, I know I freaked them out a few times. <laughs> One of our staff shared this week that they were in at the shops recently and they just felt the Holy Spirit leading them into a jewellery store. That's some pretty good leading right there, isn't it, ladies? In fact, husbands, that could be a pretty good leading of the Spirit for you too. But without any sense of, you know, personal benefit, our staff member went into the shop, not actually looking for anything particular, and started to engage with the uh, assistant that was there to help them and spoke, they had some shared experiences in life, some things that just naturally came out as they started to talk. And uh, so they continued to engage, uh, shared phone numbers, and started to engage with one another, and uh, a relationship has started to form. Nothing weird, nothing you know, crazy, all uh, in response to the Spirit of God. There was a moment for that response to take place. Now, she also bought a bracelet and a locket, so look... <laughs> I can't go beyond the story, but I know that God was at work in the situation and being at work. And it's simply us responding, as Paul tells us, to walk in the Spirit. And then in verse 22 of Galatians chapter 5, he says that the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. 
Let us keep in step with the Spirit, he goes on to say. That the fruit of the Spirit would be part of our response. And as I walk in the Spirit, a result is my love grows. After the last 18 months, who knows that this is good for us? Turn to your neighbour and say, this is good for you. This is good for you. As I walk in the Spirit, my joy grows. Who needs a little more joy? I think that's one of the hallmarks of knowing that you're walking with Jesus, that your joy can be alive. Uh, as a result of walking in the Spirit, I am a more patient person. Amen? I'm not speaking about myself. I'm speaking words of faith over you, that you are a more gentle person, that you are... Uh, goodness flows from you, that self-control is within you. These are marks of the fruit of the Spirit and the work of the Holy Spirit in each of our lives. Now, I know that there are some really intelligent people that have put all this together. and so. But as I sit in church, I need it explained to me. I generally go home and my wife Helen talks to me about the threads of the message. So let me bring it back. You heard Margaret's message to us a little earlier. Matthew chapter 7, Jesus says, it's by your fruit in your life that people know who you're following and who you're living and serving. Then we go to John 13 verse 35 and Jesus tells us, tells the disciples that people will know that you are my disciples when you love one another. John chapter 14, we read it this morning. Uh, the Bible, Jesus was saying, the world hasn't yet seen the Holy Spirit. But yet, how do they see the Holy Spirit, did Jesus tell us? By the fruit and the fact that we love one another. We fast forward through to the book of Galatians. Paul tells us that it's actually the fruit of the Spirit in our lives uh, that people get an introduction to the power of the Holy Spirit. And I think we are living in a generation today where people are hungry, not just for the power of the Spirit, but those that are not in a faith community, those that have not had an experience with God, are looking for the fruit of the Spirit. They want to know that this is authentic. They want to know that the work of God is alive and active within each and every one of us. That the things that Jesus told us about, that the fruit of our lives, when we love one another, people are going to know that there's something different about us, that as we we love one another. This is a message that we are invited to, that God gives to us. Uh, this is a sign for those who don't yet know and have encountered God. As you walk in the Spirit, the Spirit walks in step with you. I want God to get on my page. Who's with me? Don't you want the Holy Spirit to get on your page and get your agenda filled and do your stuff? Uh, I want to... Holy Spirit, come and sort out my problems. In fact, the Holy Spirit's calling us to get in step with, with Him, that we would surrender to Him. And it's not about us striving, not about us straining and striving to get to that space of God being at work within us. In fact, it's actually about simply opening our heart to Him. We walk in the Spirit through surrender, not striving. As I grew up, I grew up in a church where... Uh, we thought God was deaf. Anybody grow up in one of those churches? So we shouted at God. You know, we got in the room and we made a whole lot of noise. You know what I've discovered? God's not deaf. God invites us into a relationship with him. And there's a great quote from Richard Rohr. It's going to come up on the screen. And it says that we cannot attain the presence of God because we're already totally in the presence of God. What's absent is awareness. Ponder that for a minute. Little do we realize that God is maintaining us in existence with every breath we take. Take a breath in. A deep breath. Breathe it out. Spirit of God. As we take another breath... It means that God is choosing us now. And now. And now. Did you receive that? Holy Spirit is with you. 
that breath that you take in. I know some people might get a bit freaked out and feel like it's new age. No, it's New Testament. (laughs) Breathe in the Spirit of God. It's a reminder. Other people want to hijack the New Testament and hijack the things that God wants to do in us. But actually it's a reminder that the Holy Spirit is with us now. And now. And now. And as you go back into the week, as you get ready for some of those challenges that are going to be there, we've experienced them, we've seen them, we've lived through them. It's a reminder that Holy Spirit is with us. Every breath that we take now and now and now, remind yourself, encourage yourself, build yourself up this week to allow God to to speak to us. In a few minutes, we're going to have the band come back and we're going to create that space for us to take that next step to allow God's Spirit to come and be with us. There's also a couple of practical steps that, as a church, we want to invite you into uh, for this year. I know that many of us have got our own rhythms of Bible reading, uh, listening to various podcasts, encourage you to do all of those things. Uh, But we also want to create some opportunities for those. And as you heard a little earlier from Clem, Monday week, the 28th, the last day of February, we're starting together 21 days of prayer and fasting. I'm believing that in this 21 days that we're going to pray some bold prayers. I know I'm going to. I know that we've been through some stuff. We've been through some challenges. But I don't think God gets nervous when we start to pray bold prayers. And I want to believe for breakthrough. I want to believe that God is going to be at work. That some of the things that we've seen in the past, we say, God, come and do it again. We're hungry for you. We're thirsty for you. And Jesus said to us in Matthew chapter 5, when we hungry and thirst after him, what did he say? We will be filled. And so I'm going to believe that we're going to pray some bold prayers. Join with me in that. Start to plan. I've started to plan on the second part, on the fasting side. Now, I know I just lost a few of you. I'm going to try and regather you. The act of fasting is for us to withdraw from something so we can focus on the things that God is doing. There is sacrifice involved. I'm not going to undersell it to you. It's not going to hurt you that much. Uh, For some of us, uh, fasting from social media, I'm not going to look at anybody. I'm going to look straight at the ground. (laughs) Fasting from social media might be a good thing for us. Could actually break some things in our life. Uh, Could be Netflix. There could be other things. I am not the Holy Spirit. I'm just reading from some notes. But perhaps the Holy Spirit is speaking to you. Perhaps the Holy Spirit would challenge you on some things. Uh, This could be the first step. Um, stay with me. I'm going to be transparent. I've planned from next Monday, I'm going to fast my 30-minute lunch break. And uh, that's not to uh, have you think in any way for a minute, well, fantastic, Paul, well done. No, actually, I'm going to miss lunch. Uh, 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 I enjoy three good meals a day, as you can see, but um, really feel like that's something that we can, I can, I can. Now, I know not everybody can do a meal. I understand that. But what is it that God's calling you into? The reason I'm doing lunch is because I've seen friends do it. Uh, They live on two meals a day. They have a very hearty breakfast and they have an early hearty dinner. I've lived with them over a weekend and gone on this journey with them. They have a piece of fruit for lunch. So if you hear that I had a piece of fruit for lunch, come on, work with me. Um, Believe me, I won't be going to the staff kitchen over these 21 days at lunchtime because I've got all of my colleagues who are going to keep me on point. But encourage you because they do that. That's actually their rhythm of life because while there's poverty in the world and while there are people who miss a meal a day, that is their rhythm of life to walk with them. If they can do it as a lifestyle, I think I can do it for 21 days. Now, I'm not asking you to do that. Please don't hear that. What I'm asking you is to, what is the point of sacrifice? 
that we can fast from that takes our attention off some of our own pleasure, the busyness of our own world, and causes us to focus on the things that God would have us give our attention to in prayer. Uh, For you online, we're inviting you into this as well. This is something for us to do as all of our church community. Will you join me in the 21 days of prayer and fasting starting Monday week? And let's do this together as a church community, Uh, whatever that would look like for you. Thanks for joining us. And uh, I got the the text message uh, last night when I signed on. There's some other steps that you can participate in. And uh, over, you can see on the screen, two in 22, lots of things happening through our life groups, raising leaders, inviting people to life groups, lots of opportunities for us to take a next step. We don't want to overwhelm you with the next steps. In fact, during our 21 days of prayer and fasting, there is something that I believe God will speak to us about. It could already be in your own rhythm of life, or as a team, we're facilitating all of these next steps. Another next step is the evangelism course that you saw. Uh, Tina's leading us. I spoke to Tina on Friday. She's really excited about that course starting the 1st of March on a Tuesday night. I've enrolled. I think it's going to be great for people to participate in as we develop and practice the rhythms that God would have for us, allowing his spirit to be at work. These are tools for us. This is not doctrine and theology of a how-to. In fact, it's simply surrendering to God, isn't it? And you may have your own rhythms. We encourage those. Here are some practical next steps as well to help you in your journey. One thing I'm believing for is for more and more people to come to surrender their life to Jesus. Whether you're in the room today or you're watching online, perhaps you've never taken that next step to allow your life, to surrender your life to him. As we conclude our service, I want to share with you a message and a, a, a poem uh, that somebody wrote. His name was Francis Thompson. You can Google Francis Thompson in your own time. In fact, as I shared this uh, last night, I said that, and uh, I found that after the service, people were doing it in the service. Uh, well, you can, but also, trust me, you can do it when you get home. Google will still be there. Um, Francis Thompson lived uh, 1860s, 1870s, and he came from a Christian home. His dad was a doctor. And uh, in that time, you tended to follow the expectations that your parents had for you. And so he went to medical school, but he was a creative. He wanted to be a writer. And uh, he really sensed God to be at work in him. But as he went on a different path, he became addicted to drugs. He became destitute and found himself living on the streets of London, literally destitute, experiencing homelessness and all of the poverty that surrounds that. Thankfully, he came across a church community, one like ours that has got a care ministry that reaches out to touch those who were in need. And uh, he found this church community. He was able to move in, to live in this church community. They had a dormitory for people who were experiencing homelessness. And through that season, he was able to break free from the addictive behaviours in his life and literally get his life back on track. Started to write creatively. In fact, they discovered that he'd been writing even through his journey of homelessness. And one of the most powerful poems that he wrote is called The Hound of Heaven. J.J.R. Tolkien uh, wrote Lord of the Rings. Great writers have said that the writings of Francis Thompson had a significant and profound effect upon them. Francis Thompson says as he wrote this poem, He had always sensed God's Spirit leading him, chasing after him. Maybe if you've been walking with Jesus a while, you've sensed the Spirit always being with you and leading you and guiding you. Here's a couple of lines from his poem. I can't read the whole poem. It's very long. A couple of the lines. I fled him down the nights, down the days. I fled him down the arches of the years. I fled him down the labyrinthine of ways. Of my own mind and in the midst of tears, I hid from him. But with unhurrying chase and unperturbed pace, he found me. It's the work of the Holy Spirit, leading 
and guiding people towards Jesus, to find forgiveness in Him. And wherever you are in your journey with God, hand of heaven is with us. Holy Spirit is at work within us. I just like that title. And today as we conclude our message, I want to give people an opportunity to respond to the Holy Spirit, to respond to Jesus, to come and ask Jesus to come into our lives today. If you've never surrendered your life to God, whether you're in the room, in the balcony or watching online, I want to pray for us and give you that opportunity. Would you bow your heads with me? Loving God, thank you that we know that your Spirit is at work within each and every one of us. Pray for those that are yet to surrender their life to you, to come to know you. Pray that your Spirit would be speaking. I pray that each one that doesn't yet know you would sense that hound of heaven, leading us, guiding us, always with us. If that's you today, you've never surrendered your life to God. You're in the room or you're watching at home online. I wonder if you'd raise your hand so I could pray a prayer for you. That step of faith to say, God, I want to have you in my life. I want to surrender my life to you. Give my life to you so that my sin can be taken away and I can enter into the fullness of life with you. A relationship with a loving Father. That you raise your hand. I'd love to say a prayer for you. Thank you. Online as well. Join me in this prayer. Loving God, thank You that as we come to You, the Bible says we confess with our mouth that we uh, give our life to You, uh, that our hope is in the Lord Jesus Christ, that we become a child of God, that we become forgiven of our sin. And we have that indwelling of the Holy Spirit within us. Pray that would be the experience of each person in the room and all of those watching in line online today in Jesus' Name. Amen. I'm going to invite us to stand together today, if you would. I'd like to take a moment to create space in our service today for us to step into the things that the Holy Spirit has for us. Holy Spirit, every breath that we have, He is with us now and now and now. And want to invite you to be aware of His presence, aware of the Spirit's work within each and every one of us. Come on, would you join with me right now? Would you do that right in the balcony as well? Right in the back of the building online today. Aware of His presence. Step into the things that He has for us. Let's do that today. More aware. That breath of God. Come on, open your heart to Him right now. awareness of the Spirit's work within each and every one of us. our prayer today, that we would become more aware of your presence now and now and now. Each breath that we take, 
we would sense the wind of the Spirit. I pray that you would come, Holy Spirit, fall afresh on us, be at work in each of our lives, be at work in our church, I pray. Let us be aware of the move and the sensing of your Spirit, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Dear Lord, we thank you for who you are. We thank you that your presence is here, that it's real, that it's alive. And Lord, we thank you that you've given us a way to be able to experience you, Father. And I pray that as we go into this week, that we would take the, the practical steps that Paul talked about and really just live them out and, and put them into action so that we can see your spirit come alive in our lives and in, those of, uh, in the lives of those around us, Lord. And we thank you for today. We thank you for the wonderful message Paul spoke and for those who gave their uh, lives to you for the first time we ask that you would yeah. um, really just meet them right where they are that they would as they start this incredible journey of a lifelong relationship with you would they uh, know you in a way that beyond what they could ever dream or imagine Lord and we thank you for all you've done and all you're doing in their lives as well Lord in Jesus name Amen Amen What amen. an incredible message Yes Yes, yes. Um, Something that really resonated with me was when um, Paul touched on the, the practical things that we can do. It's so easy when talking about the spirit life to just sort of gloss over that and to not really think about how we can do it. So joining a, a missional community, evangelizing in, you know, just the conversations we have with people, that the coffee barista that we see every morning or the, the neighbor that we, mm. uh, we bump into, all of those have such deep and impactful meanings um, when we we lean into those and we yep. really expand on those as well and there's a lot of great ways that we can join life tracks um, our midweek our midweek conversations that we have as well so yeah really get plugged in and for for those who um, uh, wanted to give their life today online to um, to Christ you'll see uh, uh, number come up 04888 4773 yes so if you uh, if you want prayer or if you just want someone to, to chat to please just text yes to that number and someone will contact you um, throughout the week so yeah that awesome love it love yep. it love it love it and look the, we're also got our vision fund coming up and this is worth just praying about and thinking about and it's going towards four main areas this year the new church multiplication that's right we don't sit in one place for so long yep. we're growing as a church Absolutely. and as a body of christ into new areas we've also got the new missional communities this is something that is also very dear to my heart is yeah. reaching out into those into those communities and areas and like maddie said just having those conversations with people in the cafe the owners and building that relationship with them mm. and that's something that takes time but it's yeah. also hearing what they're saying it's like having one ear on hearing the conversation and another ear on okay holy spirit what are you what saying do you want, yeah what how do you can want i to say respond to this, to this? yeah and not being over religious but just yeah. being natural and building those natural yeah. relationships the other line is our online church Woo that is something we can always build and so because we want to see it yeah well maddie and i do yeah we want to see it go from strength to strength to strength yeah. to strength that we increase our measure, our depth, our breadth of what we do all yeah. online. And we just want to thank you for being part yeah. of that with us. And our live tracks expansion. Yeah. And that's a whole nother area of teaching and development of what we can take on personally as well. Yeah. And if you want to give, the link will be coming up shortly. There's also a QR code, which I can see on the screen. So plenty of ways to give. Jump on um, and it'll take you to the prompts to um, really invest into the yes. kingdom, invest into our church because, yep. um, you know, online services, who knows the impact that that can have on people. Uh, we had someone join from Gympie, you know, without this uh, platform, we would not be able to reach yeah. um, those that outside yeah. of this community so yeah really exciting stuff happening well that's it from us here Woo! at city life church thank you for joining us online it's been such a great pleasure yeah and uh have a great week 
We look forward to joining you all in the 21 days of fasting. Yes, exactly. And praying and jump into those things that we're doing here at church. Absolutely. And don't forget, we've got the midweek service on Thursday. Join us at 7.15. We're going to unpack the message a little bit more, yep. go into some of the more theological aspects of it. Yes. So yeah, pumped for that. Have a great week, everyone. We'll see you soon. God bless. Bye.